and welcome to episode number 35, for fuck's sake, of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. All right, Josh. After an hour and seven minutes of attempting to get this wonderful brand new episode out to all the Slashaholics. So we Alex, are- you remember uh, I, I showed you that awesome salesman? Um, that was selling all the baseball cards and said, definitely get laid, definitely get a girlfriend if you buy this $40 set of baseball cards. Yeah, you stopped me from calling him and you ruined my my future sex life. So thanks a lot for that. Well, you may end up having to call this time because it is a hell of a deal. A hell of a deal. He's our new sponsor for tonight, for tonight's show. And he's not selling baseball cards this time. He's selling something a little more impressive. You ready to see it? I was ready before you even finished your sentence. Yeah, man. If you want to, if you want to hook up with anybody you want, you got to watch this ad. All right, folks. You got to watch this ad. You got to feel this ad. You got to want this ad. And if you do, the world is going to be your oyster just by watching this slash tracks action news ad. Uh, here we go. Which way? This deal is so good. That I, I can hardly wait to read the net tomorrow to hear what people have to say about what we did. Folks, we have literally, there are 28 Beanie Babies in here when you consider retirement that can literally pay for everything right now. Yes, sir. With what the, what's happening with the retired prices. <laughs> Guarantee you that. 94 different Beanie Babies. And if we could, we'll put with 14 new releases and with 28 retired. Or we can just put with 28 retire, since the new releases are really no longer new releases. So that means here's what you got. And we're going to do something special. Is this it? Right there. We're going to give you the $400 maple bear free in this package. Look at that. We're going to give you the $400 maple bear free. So basically, um, I want you to understand something, folks. And we're going to go through everything you're going to get. You are going to get guaranteed. Do you know now? Because we're going to give you Princess and Aaron. I see Glory. Glory's in here. Wait, wait. Till, and, and again, we haven't even gotten started yet, folks. So you got to understand what I'm getting and, ready to tell you. We're going to throw in the yeah. maple that was only released in Canada. That's a $400 beanie baby. By itself. By itself. We sell them out at $399.95. By itself. Right now, we are going to give you this one. Are you ready for this? That's 66 current Beanie Babies, including Maple, Princess, Aaron, Peace, Glory, Glory, every currently Fortune, Rocket the Blue Jay, all the 14 new releases, all the 14, Wise the Owl, which you know is going to be retired, but anyway, uh, Drake the Ducks, uh, what is it, Stinger of the Scorpion? Uh, Ants the Anteater, Early the Robin, uh, Cuckoo the Cuckatoo, uh, Whisper the Deer, the Basset Hound, the Golden Retriever, all the 14 new releases, Jabber the Parrot, plus every current Beanie Baby that there is in America, every single current Beanie Baby in America. And then, here's the part that is unreal. Folks, Here's another, we we can pay for this in two different sections. Mm -hmm. The 65 current, and when you put in uh, maple, 66 current, you're you're over it. Uh, Maple, we're going to give you all 28 of the May retired Beanie Babies. And you want to know something? If you can afford it, buy it. Yes, that's uh, J O S H. L A space capital R U E. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. One second. What, what are you doing? I'll call right back, man. The beanie babies, one of them is going to be retired. Didn't you hear that? It's like money in the bank. It's printing money. Yeah, it sure it is. Uh, listen, if Beth's around, hand her your phone, please. You don't need, you don't need to ever hear. You know what? I regret that we even accepted a sponsorship with this guy because he almost got me with the baseball cards, and now he's getting you with the freaking Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies, man. Okay, fine, because you know what? I would be spending the money we'd be making. You're right. So we'll just report on the news. Everybody else, you buy the Beanie Babies. It's a great Wait deal. a minute. 
Wait a minute. Are you just bullshitting me right now? Because you're acting like you're on my side and you're kind of agreeing with me. But I think you're agreeing with me so fast because you're going to call him back later on when I'm not around. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shit. Really? No. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I've been watching a lot of body language stuff on YouTube and uh, you were nodding yes when you were saying no. <laughs> exactly dude yeah no put your phone down <laughs> get back on screen okay fine fine let's do it let's do it let's do it get freaking folk listen after an hour and seven minutes of attempting to record this we're finally in and you're trying to call this guy again you're a real jerk and you're selfish you know that he's 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 really good at his job i'll give him that uh, he apparently is the greatest salesman of all time so slashaholics if you didn't notice today's episode is sponsored by beanie babies so Go out and get you some before they're retired because apparently they're worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> dude, Beanie Babies. Um, I saw a documentary. I don't remember if it was on Hulu or HBO Max or whatever, but it was like some lady uh, some lady was collecting as, as her retirement. All right, Josh, let's get into an actual segment. Forget the sponsorship. Put your phone away. Throw your phone in the in the road. Have a semi hit it. Just like uh, in Pet Cemetery when the little kid got hit by the cemetery. Throw your phone uh, into the street there. Thank you. Nice comment. Mean comment. Nice comment. We are back in the saddle, buddy. <laughs> Let's do it. My phone's broke, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, hey, I think Gage is broke too after he got hit by that <laughs> semi truck. You got the shoe. I hope, dude, I hope your phone's not broke. All right, nice comment, Josh. And this is regarding Slash Tracks News, episode number 34. Okay. All right, and this is from our friend Sandra Liam 659 Sandra Liam 659 says, Love the titles of these shows and the opening cartoon with you two in a crane machine. LOL. Keep up the great work. Will do. Yeah, we'll do Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, what noted. We got it. We wrote it down. Nice comment. We're going to remember. We got it. Uh, mean comment, Josh. Here we go. Been looking forward to this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. And this is from Madalena Sweet. Uh, and she's referring to Slash Tracks Reviews TV. And this is on our new channel, Josh. This is on oh, Slash no. Tracks uh, <laughs> Network with Alex Vanover. So this is our brand new uh, channel that Josh and I started, Slashaholics. So if you haven't, Subscribe to it. Do it right now. Slash Tracks Network without Vanover. Tons of reviews, TV reviews, action reviews, comedy movie reviews. Uh, slash Tracks News Expresses are going to be over the uh, trash tracks. All the good non horror stuff will be over on that channel. So go subscribe right now. And you know what? Got to get to the comment, though. Enough of the business. <laughs> she says... Nothing screams mature like a middle-aged man playing with toys and watching cartoons. Wow. Go get laid. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I she, I took her inspiration, and then I uh, used it on Mother Evil later that evening. So <laughs> thank you, Madalena. I, re I, re I replied to her. I was like, who says I'm not? Like, yeah. What the hell? It's 2024, man. Action yeah. figure, being an action figure collector is a hot thing. So yeah, dude, you don't watch, uh, you don't watch Toy Federation on YouTube and Big Bad Toy Store, their channel and stuff. You're, you know what, Madalena, why don't you go get laid? Why are you commenting on a video of a of a middle aged man unboxing toys and talking about a tur uh, Ninja Turtles cartoon? Wait, Matt, you didn't. I'm you didn't even unbox the toy until the end of the episode. So she, she stuck made around it all the way through. She stuck around for the review. <laughs> she watched the whole video and commented. <laughs> Why don't you go get laid, you freaking dumb dumb? All right. Nice comment to end the first segment. Are you ready, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. This is uh this is our friend Monique Ma 55E9314. And she's this is in regards to slash tracks reviews. Number 10, Jason X. Okay. And this is pretty short and sweet. I actually really like this comment. She says, this review doesn't suck on any level. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. That, yeah. That's good. That might be the comment the comment of the month. That might be the Slash Trex News comment of the month. Way to go. Doesn't Love suck it. on any level. And you know she's no. a fan of the movie, too. So that's great. Yeah. No, Jason X. You know what? Jason X, 26,000 views right now, buddy. Pretty good. 
Yeah. Like almost more views than the movie got in the theater. <laughs> hey, I bought one of those tickets <laughs> to see it in the theater. So yeah. Slash Alex, I'm guilty. I didn't I I, I pirated it. <laughs> my bad. I did too. It was just my first chance to see a Jason movie on the big screen. So uh, dude. L- listen, I wanted to go. I should have went. My first time seeing Jason on the big screen was Freddy versus Jason. Okay. Well, I was going to say, Josh, um, I was so stoked and excited to go see Jason and Freddy in the theaters. Time. They had come out with this website, basically teasing the movie and promoting it. Yeah. And I think I, I went to that website and visited it at least a thousand times before I finally got to see the movie in theaters. Like I was pumped for that film. You know what's funny is you pirated uh, Jason X and watched Freddy vs. Jason in theaters. Mm -hmm. I watched Jason X in theaters and ended up pirating Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, I never went to the theater to see Freddy vs. Jason. (laughs) Touche, New Line. (laughs) Uh, Even out. Hey, man, my four times I saw Freddy vs. Jason in the theater should cover your end. Um, I saw that movie four times in the theater. I loved it. It was it didn't hold up as well uh, in our review, but I still really enjoyed it at the time. Well, New Line owes me anyways because uh, I paid to see Jason X. So yeah, you know they, they owe me one. New Line owes us both anyway for talking about their movies thirty years later and uh, giving them clicks, and hopefully somebody you know watches the movie after our stellar reviews of their films, right? Exactly. Yeah. So you're welcome, Bob Shea, you jerk. You <laughs> freaking billionaire weirdo. Um, Josh, how can the Slashaholics get a hold of us if they want to write us an email? Some uh somewhere up above or below slash tracks twenty twenty at gmail dot com. Be sure to check out the second channel. Link is in the description below. Uh also you can if you want to help the channel out, uh, help us keep it going and growing for years to come. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian. You can hit up our cameo, cameo.com forward slash slash tracks network. And uh, there's information below to make uh, super, super thanks donations to our PayPal or Cash App. It's all on the screen or in the description in the pin comment. Yeah, that's, that's right, slash holics, slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Write Josh and I, give us suggestions for who would win, would you rather. Ask us for advice. And also, as Josh said before, and I said before, brand new channel, uh, all new content, all new shows you'll never be able to see on this channel. Slash Tracks Network with Alex Manover. It's the sister channel. Uh, It is the little sister to this channel's big brother. And Josh, let's get into fun facts. Let's do it. All right, man. The stomach in your mouth, Josh. That stomach in your mouth feeling when you're on a roller coaster... Okay. I thought you were about to tell me we have little stomachs in our mouth that I didn't know about. So, okay. No, this isn't the movie Society. You don't have a stomach in your asshole. No, this is uh, the stomach in your mouth feeling on a roller coaster, Josh, is actually your organs floating inside of you. So it's your stomach in your mouth then. That I, you know, what's crazy about this fun fact is, um, yeah, it's actually your stomach going into your mouth, like your small intestine or your large <laughs> intestine. But I, like science has proven that like most, like a lot of our health is regulated by our gut. So I've got a fun medical fact that I learned from being married to a nurse. Okay. okay. If you ever find yourself in like a slasher situation and your intestines are coming out. Yeah. Just push them back in because they know where to go they will automatically go back to where they're supposed to go. What? They know where to go. Okay. Yeah, if your intestines start coming out, just push them back in. They'll go back to where they're supposed to. Just don't kink them. Yeah. Wow. That's really interesting. That's a cool fun fact, right? little bonus. Yeah, it is. That's bizarre. Um, All right, Slashaholics, if your guts are falling out after this episode or during the episode, just push them back in. Don't kink them. Jeff, do not cut your stomach open. I'm talking to you right now. I know that there's somebody watching named Jeff. Don't try it. Just if it ever happens naturally, okay? We're not we're not telling you to try it, Jeff. We know we yeah. know we know we know what you're thinking, Jeff. Just stop it. Sounds like you know someone named Jeff, and you're speaking directly to him from previous experience. I'm just hoping there's a Jeff out there that's watching. He's like, what the fuck? You know. I don't know. <laughs> 
Yeah, you probably are thinking you're you're saying it's random, just like you said you weren't going to call that guy when you were nodding about the Beanie Babies. <laughs> mm. All right, yeah. Josh. In Norway, the movie Speed with Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, you know, where the tra- the bus can't go below like fifty five miles per hour or whatever. Yeah, that movie was in Norway. It wasn't called Speed, Josh. It was called Fart. What? Yeah, there's a movie poster. As a matter of fact, uh, that might go on the thumbnail. But it, the in the, the Norway movie poster of Speed, it, it has Keanu Reeves, and in the Speed writing, it says fart. Why? Like I don't know. I just I think it's hilarious. I don't know. I just thought that was really funny. <laughs> and that's real. That's like yeah, a real... it is a real fun fact. He must be trying. To... So, dude, sometimes like when I'm out on runs, I think I've told you this before. When you're running, sometimes it, you don't feel like you have to go to the bathroom, but if you start running, you start shaking it up or whatever, and then you got to go. Maybe they like something was lost in translation and they thought Keanu Reeves had to like run to the bathroom, right? Before he shit himself. So that maybe that's what they thought the premise was, you know? Wait. I got to be really speedy. We just lost our Beanie Baby sponsorship. Thank you. Just had to oh, go because talk I said about Keanu Reeves was going to. Get his pants. That and the whole poop everything. We just lost the Beanie Babies guy. Thank you so much. No, we didn't lose the Beanie Baby guy. He's not those as good as he is. He's listen, he's hoping you call back because he's not got a lot of phone calls, I bet. Come on. Beanie Babies <laughs> in 2024. He's lucky we accepted the sponsor. How about that? That guy is an asshole. He pays us to sponsor show, and then he's trying to sell one of the stars of the of the network the, like the star almost you okay the Corey matthews of the network he's trying to sell Corey a bunch of fucking beanie babies <laughs> you almost bought them i know it it, it was tempting it was tempting uh, god man uh josh uh, mm-hmm. 1956 children attending school we're Can actually we... served wine on their lunch breaks. W- when? What's that? When was it? In 19... Uh, until 1956, French children attending school were served wine during their lunch breaks. Wow. that That's that's amazing. They stopped it in 1956. Uh, not 1957 or 1955. Just... <laughs> yeah. That must have made teaching so much easier for these teachers over in France because it's like, man, these kids are driving me crazy. They're super hyper. What could calm them down? Maybe some booze. <laughs> Maybe because alcohol is a depressant. Like one or two could just chill them out, you know? Nap time. Major felony, <laughs> major felony now. But uh, I wonder if the booze, Josh, uh-huh. was pro- procured by the fountain of tits. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback slash a mm-hmm. holiday. If you've been following the show, uh, there's the fountain. I be- What is it, Josh? There's a fountain in like Italy or some country in Europe where like it's called the fountain of tits and you get free wine. Yeah. It's always serving free wine. <laughs> yeah. I remember I said it should be free milk, but that yeah. was very gross. <laughs> yeah. So Europe has a lot of different uh, things going on for alcohol. Like what? what's going on? We just got the sponsorship back. Really? Yeah, the fountain of tits did it. Oh my god, awesome! All right, Josh, last fun fact of the episode, buddy. All right, all right, man. Let me find my <laughs> let me find my place here. Uh, this has been a just a beautiful recording process. Slashaholics, the smell of donuts, Josh, can increase blood flow to the genitals and actually stimulate an erect phallus. Wow. That, uh, you know, I've often wondered if that's why cops, you know, sat in their cars so long with donuts, you know, just not doing anything, sitting on the side of the road. Are you insinuating that they're masturbating with donut, like donuts, like with the hole in the donuts? Is that, I, I don't know where you're going with this. That's why there's holes in donuts. Yeah, you just put it all together right there. They, dude, they actually didn't, they, they <laughs> all donuts originally were just maple bars. And the hole was created by the cops who were masturbating <laughs> with the donuts. I had a friend that thought the donut holes, that donut holes were actually, you know, just just the stuff they had popped out of the donuts that day and not just something that they make. 
Yeah. You know? uh, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> did you know that donuts were boner fuel, apparently? Like, they were Viagra before Viagra? No. I don't think I've ever had a donut get me hard on, though. So Dude, it's like Viagra on a budget. No wonder so many people buy those fucking Krispy Kremes for fundraisers. Yeah. Like, oh, buy a box of Krispy Kremes because you know you, you they're not they're not available in your town, but it's like they're boner they're boner fuel. It's not fundraising; it's fun raising. Exactly. <laughs> and that slash a holics is your donor <laughs> donut boner information fact of the episode. There you go, <laughs> Josh. Let's get into uh someone wrote in actually we've got a who would win okay all right let's get into the next segment who would win slash tracks who would win okay so this is from our friends uh Sally Selim Marnay and they wrote in on episode number one of slash tracks reviews tv so they wrote in on the other channel Josh okay okay so they put in the comments they said Alex Josh who's winning Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or the Thundercats Okay, I was never a big Thundercats fan, so I'm going to go with the Ninja Turtles just because I don't know enough, but... Like them? Huh? <laughs> that's you're, So you like the Ninja Turtles more, so that's why they win. I don't know enough about the Thundercats, but I think that the Ninja Turtles teamwork and, and uh, their allies like Casey Jones and, and stuff like that, I think that they yeah. would probably, they'd probably win. Dude. Lionel by himself could probably beat the Ninja Turtles. He has sight beyond sight, baby. <laughs> He's got the Sword of Thundera, man. He's like lightning quick. He almost beat He-Man in the YouTube. Uh, there's a YouTube series where it's like, who would win? He-Man versus uh, Lionel or fucking whatever. He almost beat He-Man. He-Man is the most powerful man in the universe. What if it's the Ninja Turtles and they use the, like, I don't know if you watched the later seasons of Ninja Turtles, the cartoon, the original one, but like they yeah, start when using... they started fighting like Lord Drag instead of Shredder, Shredder. Well, they also like started using this mutagen stuff that turned them into like beasts, like giant fucking beasts. Uh, oh, do you know what? Do you know why they did that? To try to make it edgier? No, so they could make more new toys. Mm. <laughs> That's... That's probably the only reason. Um, Ninja Turtles, like season seven, eight, nine, right before they came out with the last mutation where they had a female Ninja Turtle. Like, <laughs> I was the bomb. Yeah, I was pretty much checked out at that point. You know um, that the, the next generation ones or the next mutation, uh, like it was completely Haim, Haim Saban. I don't know how to say that name. Power uh, Ranger guy. Yeah. And he actually had, they had a crossover with the Power Rangers in space. I did know that. I did That's know that. Crazy. Um, I remember being a kid and watching the next mutation because I think it was like on, I don't know if it was on CBS or it, I it think it Fox. was on CBS. It was, oh, it was on, on Fox. Fox. Okay, yeah. it was on Fox. Fox was one of the channels I could get when we didn't have cable on the UHF band. Like, yeah. So Slashaholics, back when Josh and I were kids, if you didn't have cable, there was a UHF station. It wasn't just a Weird Al movie. <laughs> you could actually find channels that would come in uh, and there was usually like Fox, like CBS, like NBC. Um, I don't even think you can use bunny ears now in certain parts of the United States. Like All some digital. you can, but back in the old days, you could get away without having cable and still be able to watch most major networks. Yep. Um, the good old days. Uh, who do I think wins, Josh? I'm obviously saying the Thundercats, even though I love the Ninja Turtles. I love the Ninja Turtles. I just think Lionel is so super powered. He's like super strong, super fast, super intelligent. Um, I just, I don't see a world where, unless Donatello comes up with some sort of device that he created down in the sewers or whatever. Well, he Donatello does machines, so. He, he, and, and Raphael is cool, but, but rude. Yep, yep. Yeah. And Michelangelo, of course, is a party dude. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah, you know. I, I'm saying Thundercats. Even I love the Ninja Turtles, and everybody knows I love the Ninja Turtles. I just think in a in a fight, and it's not just Lionel. I'm just discussing Lionel against them. I mean, he's got Panthro and all and Shitara and all of it, Kitten Cat and Snarf. He's got yeah. all the all the homies. But when They're the Thunder there. but when the Thundercats attack, them turtle boys won't cut him no slack. Yeah, it doesn't matter because they're gonna get their fucking heads <laughs> chopped off by the sword of Thundera. Um so yeah, Slashaholics, way down in the comments below, who's winning, Ninja Turtles or Thundercats? 
and and write in right now to slash tracks 2020 and give us a uh, yeah give us a uh, what do you, another who would win this is super fun i had a really good time doing this one yeah i i actually read that comment didn't they have like two or was it just I one no he had two there was like two he i can't remember what exactly it was but it was like two or three different suggestions and i just picked the one that would fit the best i think it was like tmnt 87 versus 2003 and uh, I would go with 87 any day of the week. So the 2003 was like, I had just turned 20. I remember I bought those. And I, I really like those turtles that they came out with the playmates that they came out with this extra version. They looked more realistic, as realistic as a mutated human turtle can look that knows <laughs> ninjutsu. Um, but they looked more, less cartoony. They were super yeah. cool looking, but I never really Edgy. got into yeah. yeah, I never got into the uh, the series. Yeah, like Krang was uh, was an alien. I mean, he was always an alien, but like there was like different Krangs. It was weird. It was totally different vibe. I think I only caught two or three different episodes of it. I never. Mm. It didn't hook me. In fact, Shredder was a Krang. Um, Maybe. Is, and then in the next mutation, Shredder gets defeated and like killed in the first episode. And Wait a it's like, yeah, the, the next, next mutation, the Heinz yeah. Saban thing. Yeah, in the first episode, or may, it might not even be the first episode. It might, but sometime during the show, Shredder's in like one or two episodes, gets defeated, and like they're always fighting like this dragon dude. It's not even Shredder. There, there's a um in the original Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird Ninja Turtle comic book that started everything. Shredder dies in the first comic book. Yeah, yeah, that is true. They got rid of him in the first comic book, and it was so popular that the ever people were demanding that shredder come back there and so they're like well shit <laughs> we got we got to resurrect this guy because he's like they didn't they wrote it as like a one-off they i don't think they even understood how popular this was going to become and they had to like do a real quick backtrack well you know i read a comment on the turtle video as well i think it was a turtle video somebody said that we should review uh turtles forever or maybe i yeah, the, no somebody did say that in the comments on the new channel they they said uh me and you need to re review or watch and review do a reaction to the turtles forever episode we, sh we should do a re like a re reaction probably because i've seen it once i watched it with my kids in like 2012 or something when they were real little but i remember it being pretty freaking cool it's like the 2003 turtles meet the 87 turtles meet the comic book turtles and uh it, you get shredder and crane back it's it was it was really fun please can we, I would, let's do it now. Stop the news episode and let's go just review that right now. Um, yes, mark me down. I'll definitely do that. Yeah. Um, let's get into a would you rather. Okay. Okay, so this would you rather was actually not written into the show because none of the Slashaholics wrote in. I just decided to take it on my my own my own accord, uh, <laughs> if I even use that word correctly. <laughs> I, put, I put it into my own hands and I came up with a pretty good one, Josh. Okay. All right, Josh. Would you rather be able to talk your way out of any situation or would you rather be able to punch your way out of any situation? See, the, the any situation things where it's throwing me because there's certain situations where <laughs> I would definitely prefer to punch my way out, but I'm getting, I'm not getting any or the other. <laughs> I think, I, I think I'm better at talking my way out of a situation. So I, it doesn't matter if you're better at talking. What, what do you want to do though? What would you rather do? What does Josh want? I think I'd rather talk my way out because it's also fun to like, like if, <laughs> if you got like a really dim-witted muscle head or something and you can make them question <laughs> their own intelligence. <laughs> I, want, I, want, I would rather be able to punch my way out of any situation because in a way, if I've been, okay, so I'm obviously a badass. I've been able to punch my way out of like all these situations. People, like the legend of Alex is going to start growing. People are going to realize that I'm a badass. <laughs> it's going to get to a point to where I'm not even going to have to punch my way out anymore or talk because I could just look at them and like, you know, you know, give them the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to win. You I see, can punch my way out of any situation. Don't make me the leader, and then I'll make you the head, the head like general of the army in the apocalypse or something. You know, because I'm I'm known for just my my talking my way out of anything, being a great speaker, and you're a great fighter. So, me and yeah. dude, me and you go to McDonald's to get ice cream after uh, recording this episode, and 
you're able to talk your way out of any situation. I may be able to punch my way out of any situation. And they're like, you know, Josh, you know, we're feeling good. You know, the episode finally got recorded after all these problems we've been having, you know, recording. And uh, we get a McFlurry to celebrate, right? We're going to get a McFlurry. But guess what they tell us, man? The machines aren't working. The, the machines broke. The machines <laughs> broke. And then Josh looks at the poor girl working the counter, the window, and he's like, Jedi, Jedi style. Are, are you sure the machines broke? <laughs> Alex is right here. You sure? Yeah. Are you sure? So he's using his power of persuasion with that fucking fork tongue of his. And then he points to me and I kind of just look at the gal working the window and I go, are, are you sure? You know, like <laughs> we roll out of there with McFlurries, dude. They, I don't care if they have to fucking stir it. We're leaving with ice cream <laughs> one way or the other. Cause Hulk is going to smash that fucking machine. If we don't get our treats. Right. Exactly. We got a bad yeah. case of uh, of Hulkamania and it's running wild through our bodies. So <laughs> I'm like, please, whatever you do, lady work in the world, the, working the counter. Don't give me a donut McFlurry because I don't <laughs> think I can drive with a massive boner out of this drive through. <laughs> Jesus. Record, hey, record scratch right there. Josh doesn't even know how to react to that. I don't. <laughs> hey, uh, let's get to something a little more serious. What do you think? <laughs> I don't trust gonna, you. But sure, let's try. From from donuts, from donuts causing erections and me punching my way out of McDonald's with a McFlurry, and Josh using his Jedi mind tricks on the poor people working the the drive through window. Let's get into an ask slashy. Okay. All right. Um. So the okay. So Lauren Bien Avenue seven three six two, and I don't think I pronounced her name correctly, but I'm sorry, Lauren. Uh, she wrote in on the last ap uh, episode of Slash Tracks News, episode number 34. She said, Josh, Alex, I'm a teenager that still loves stuff like the Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, Pro Wrestling, and I still love to play with the toys. But my siblings and parents give me a lot of crap for it. Should I just sell the toys or should I pack them up and just grow up? I really enjoy these things, but my family really makes me feel bad for it. Can you please help me? Thanks. Wow. 13 year old me could have wrote that question. Like seriously. Um, don't, don't, don't pack them up. Don't sell them. Be young as long as you can. I don't care if you're exactly. 15 years old, still playing with them. Cause I, I, I had a situation. I grew up with six siblings and my, my own parents made fun of me because I was still playing with toys at like 13 years old, like Power Rangers and stuff. And I was so embarrassed that I sold them uh, and used the money to get like more grown up stuff. And I did a lot of things trying to grow up fast to like meet their expectations, you know, like I started acting older, but that got me into like smoking and uh, I'm sorry to get a little too invasive here, but losing my virginity at like 14 years old. Uh, I wish Thanks I could. A lot of cream. Yeah, it was the donuts too. But yeah, if I could go back in time, I would have told them to kiss my ass, and uh, I would have stayed a kid as long as I could. And you need to do the same thing. And you know what? You can be an adult that's just a kid at heart. Uh, me and Alex play with toys. Shit, we don't care. We do. And Josh and I put out a video on the other channel where we're opening toys. <laughs> so yeah, I would say I couldn't agree with Josh more. I agree with everything he said. Be a kid as long as you possibly can. <clears throat> There's plenty of time for you, Lauren, to be an adult. Um, and being an adult doesn't mean you can't enjoy toys. The first place that I go to when I walk into any store, and you can ask my girlfriend, Nicole, who plays Mother Evil on Slash Tracks, ask her where the first place I go to in any store it is always the toy aisle. It hasn't changed since I've been able to form memories. That's the first place I go. And also, Lauren, do not sell these toys because in 10 years, you're going to have a massive case of member berries and you're going to be rebuying these same toys for five times the amount. Yep. So if your parents cared about you at all, your financial well-being at all, for your future self, save these toys, keep playing with them, be a kid, enjoy your life. There's so much time to be an adult. It's just not right now. Enjoy your life. Be a kid. I yeah. brought a Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestling figure uh, to the high school my senior year. I had him on my desk and I'm like 17 years old and people were looking at me or whatever. I don't give a crap. And that's the bottom line 
because Slash Track said so. How about that? Be a yeah, kid. They're just jealous, anyways, because they don't they don't have that wonder and stuff anymore. So yeah. you hold on to yours. Thanks for thanks for that. That kind of got me in the feels here because I went through very similar thing and I really regret it. So. Yeah, be a kid as long as you can, Lauren. Just and thank you so much for writing in the show. We appreciate it. And if you ever have any questions and you want more advice in the future, please write in. Uh, we, we had a lot of this was a good question. I really enjoyed this one. I just burped. I apologize. <laughs> uh, Josh, let's get into Slash Track Sports. All right, let's do it. All right, man. This isn't a story. <clears throat> Excuse me. This isn't a story. This is just a quick little, I just want to mention it. Okay. So the NBA logo, Josh, is is based on Jerry West. And Jerry West was, uh, he was a really, really, re he was like Michael Jordan for the 60s, the 1960s and 70s. Uh, he recently passed away, uh, and I believe he was, if he wasn't 90, he was close to 90. Um, Jerry West was one of the all-time greats, not just a great basketball player, but great coach and great NBA executive. He is in the Hall of Fame for basketball more than once and for more than one position. So NBA logo, great at everything he does in basketball or did in basketball. I just wanted to uh, show my respect and say that he'll be missed. It's awesome. The logo, Jerry West. You're going to be missed, buddy. Um, so we lost him and uh, Donald Sutherland. Uh, we did lose Donald Sutherland, and I'm from Oregon. And Donald Sutherland did Animal House in Oregon. He um, did the movie Prefontaine. He played Coach Bill Bowerman in at the University of Oregon. Uh, Billy, he was in MASH, and that has nothing to do with Oregon. But he's done <laughs> Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland is an all-time legend. At least before he passed, he cloned himself and named himself Kiefer. So, oh, good. Well, good on him. Hey, Kiefer <laughs> Sutherland filmed Stand by Me in Oregon. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Josh. That so anyway, we did, so we went over the Jerry West thing. Let's get into the first like hard hitting sports story of the show. Okay, you ready? This is mm -hmm. serious. You're gonna love this because it's not really sports. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I'm sure you've I'm sure you've seen this too. Uh world record holding champion hot dog eater Joey Chestnut has been banned, Josh, from the 2024 Nathan's hot dog eating contest. He's representing impossible foods, which is basically the fake hot dog stuff, fake burger stuff. So that caused the issue with Nathan's hot dogs. They're like, listen, if you're representing anything other than the hundred percent all natural. Beef, Nathan's hot dogs, you can kiss our ass, buddy. You're not in the, I don't care if, if you are the Michael Jordan, Jerry West of the hot dog world, you can get out of our contest, pal. How do you feel about that? that all these fans of Joey Chestnut, man, they're not going to be able to see him fucking destroy hot dogs on the 4th of July, and I think that's un-American. I'm kind of on the side of Nathan's here. If you're not, if you're representing the fake stuff, you can kiss our, you know, cow, <laughs> chicken, and pig buttholes and, and privates and... All that, just kiss him goodbye, man. Just... Yeah. yeah. Whatever and, and it's made out of. <laughs> salute the flag, or the red, white, and blue. Eat four or five uh, hot dogs made of pig nuts and freaking <laughs> cow hoofs. The cheaper the hot dog, the tastier it is, in my opinion. <laughs> like, yeah. I, don't, I don't like ballparks. <laughs> like, I prefer have, Bar hey, S. <laughs> bar S. Do you have Bar S hot dogs over there? In yes, I love it. I love it. They're like 33 cents a package sometimes, man. And like <laughs> my mom, my mom, like I'm telling you right now, she fed us from the years 1988 to 91 on fish sticks and bar S hot dogs. And every once in a while, shake and bake. Uh, and that helps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. dude. Our family could have been sponsored by fucking bar S. Uh, I love their their bologna is the best too, man. <laughs> What about some of the balonies and like Oscar Meyer has definitely like Jerry Seinfeld even does a bit on it. They've been creating meat <laughs> <laughs> like head cheese and then the, the meat with the little pimentos and shit in it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, what kind of meat is that? Like, where'd that come from? I just I've never liked ballparks or Oscar Meyer. Like, I just Why? Bar that, that, that's good. They're not as tasty as Bar S. I don't I know it's the cheapest and probably the worst for me, but dude, probably all the salt. You probably like the salt in the bar S. <laughs> it's like 80% like, of it. Is, they're like, this meat, is, you're eating zebra meat 
transformed into hot dogs, man. You're eating fucking zebra, like on The Simpsons. You're eating grade F meat, uh, roadkill, uh, possums, like turned into. And I'm not talking possum pie here, slash Alex. We're not talking about the delicious dessert. We're talking about actual possum asshole uh, that Bar S is making these hot dogs out of. They make it taste good. That's all I know. <laughs> you know what, though, dude? Like, I don't know if Joey Chestnut's not going to be in this contest, though. I don't know if I want to watch 20 or 30 other guys, you know, try to destroy 30 to 40 hot dogs while <laughs> dipping buns in, in water and slurping it down their throats as fast as they can and, and literally regurgitating sometimes all over themselves and <laughs> the judges. I don't know if I want to participate in watching this if they're banning the champ. You got to make room for the new folks, the new generation, the next generation of of of, of dog eating. Um, oh, dude, this Josh, if he's not in the championship and you win the the mustard yellow belt, right? Say you win the title belt. <laughs> do you feel like you're fucking Razor Ramon when he got the IC belt because Shawn Michaels forfeited it? Like you're the champ, but are you really the champ? You know what I mean? Or yeah. is Joey Chestnut next year? Are they setting up a big angle? Is the new champ going to have the mustard yellow belt? And then the old champ, Joey Chestnut, shows up with his old mustard yellow belt, and they have a fucking hot dog championship ladder match. Ladder match, where, yes. <laughs> yeah, where they have a pack of bar ass hot dogs above the table, and whoever can get them, they have the bar ass hot dogs and the two mustard yellow titles, and whoever comes down with the fucking bar ass hot dogs and the belts is the new champ. You got to eat them while you're at the top of the ladder, like yeah. the whole pack. You know how hard that would be if you're trying to eat these hot. You try to eat these hot dogs, but your opponent is shoving you, <laughs> shoving you, shoving the ladder down. <laughs> like if you go through the if you go through the table while trying to eat the hot dogs, you're disqualified. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I want to I want to see this now. Forget celebrity death match. <laughs> I just want to see a hot dog eating ladder match. And you know how much like, better the ratings would be if they had a fucking hot dog eating ladder. <laughs> elimination <laughs> chamber. How would an elimination chamber work with hot dog hey, eating? <laughs> hey, let me tell you something, Vince. I got an idea. Yeah, I've been thinking about it for a while. Yeah, you know how all these fans. Yeah, they love hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. I think, Vince, I think we should take some bar S dogs, yeah, if you dig it, yeah, and put them on top of a ladder, yeah. And me and the pukester, that's Hogan, in case you didn't know, yeah, we'll go for it at SummerSlam, yeah. Listen, bro, okay, what I think we should do is put it on a pole, okay? Oh, God, no. <laughs> bar S, bar S hot dogs on a pole, bro. On a forklift, bro. God. We're not talking about wrestling right now, but I want to talk about wrestling for five seconds. Have you been watching the death of WCW on Spike? I watched the first two episodes. I'm, I haven't. That's all I've seen so far. Okay, Vince, the Vince Russo episode, I believe, is episode three, which just aired. Um, he, I can't, I cannot stand listening to him. He made a comment, Josh, that said the reason he put himself on TV so often is because in his mind, bro. I'm going to be honest with you, without a shadow of a doubt, bro, I was better on camera than 80% of the talent in the locker room at the time, bro. Oh, yeah, that's that's why I tuned in every week, you know, and I was a hardcore WCW guy. I was like, I, I got to see more of Vince Russo. Are you, you know? fucking kidding me? Like, he put, yes, the belt, <laughs> he put the belt on himself, Josh. He was winning matches in football pads with a goddamn football helmet on and a sting bat. I think that Vince paid him to go and kill WCW. I really do. And it's and it's a long a long thing. Like they had an agreement, non-disclosure to, agreement to never talk about it in public. Uh, he'd never work for Vince again. I think Russo, he was paid to kill WCW. Russo ho horrendous, uh terrible. Uh we have so much fun stuff to talk about in wrestling. Let's finish up sports real quick so we can get into wrestling. I'd love to interview you here on on our other channel though, Vince yeah. Russo, for sure. Bro. Yeah, he's gonna love to do the show after I we just shit all over him. Um, you know who might do the show though, Josh? Easy. We might get Eric Bischoff on the show because guess what? We were mentioned on his show and yeah, we're gonna show cool. a little clip once we get into wrestling. Yes, Josh yes. came up fucking huge with that one. Here we go.
this is a sports fun fact. So we're going, we're going, we have a fun fact here. Okay. Mm -hmm. George Brett is considered one of the greatest hitters of all time in Major League Baseball. He played for the Kansas City Royals, okay? Uh, hit over 300 for batting average, God, like 10, 11 times. He won the batting title, won the MVP. George Brett is amazing. The Missouri DMV, Josh, once waived George Brett's eyesight part of the test for his license. Do you know why they did that? On the paperwork, they say... If George Brett can hit 350, we figured he could see. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's, I don't, is that legal? Can you really do that if you're the DMV? Yes. Uh, I don't, this is like, I shouldn't be saying this publicly, but uh, I'm nearsighted. And one time I lost my glasses and it was time for me to update my driver's license. <laughs> yeah. I took my test and I was like, E, A, h and the lady's like sir they're all numbers <laughs> so oh no she let me try it like four times until i i got it just enough to pass it so dude you know what i heard you told me off air and i know you're just being nice you're being nice because you don't want to like put the dmv on blast they actually gave you a performance enhancer to help with your eyesight the lady was like listen I think you can't see because there's not a, enough blood flow to your eyeballs right now. <laughs> it don't I can eat this maple bar, Josh. It may give you a raging boner, but I think it'll help your eyesight to pass this test. Is that what happened? That's what you said happened. Yeah, that's what happened. You know, it, it's kind of scary, though, Alex, because, you know, I, I my eyesight's at least good enough to drive. How many other people are getting to take their eye exam, like, multiple times? Dude, this you must have been, be. <laughs> dude, you must have been the most polite DMV customer of all time. Because usually when I go there, they want me away from their desk as fast as possible. They want to make sure I have all the paperwork filled out in triplicate. They want <laughs> copies of my fucking report card when I was in third grade. They want my mother's maiden name. They want the name of my mom's first like animal she had as a, <laughs> as a child. They, like They want to know the name of the first street my dad ever had a kiss on. Just all these uh, fucking random questions. Uh, when's the first time I got a boner from eating a maple bar? All this stuff, dude. I didn't even have the right fucking... I said I was given letters when it was just numbers. I can just imagine them like just waiting for a chance to jump in. <laughs> They're like, you obviously, Josh, know you failed. So please <laughs> leave the DMV. <clears throat> Do not um, pass, Joe. All right. Josh, last sports episode, uh, our sports story of the episode. Okay. All right, man. 70-year-old uh, Las Vegas Raiders owner, Mark Davis, recently got his freaking smoke show Instagram model girlfriend uh, pregnant. She's 26 years old. They just announced that she's pregnant. What's your uh, thoughts? Mazel tov, I guess. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, can, we can bang out kids into our senior years, man. <laughs> That's crazy. What the heck? It's like, um, it's almost like these Instagram models and these girls that are like in their mid twenties, like the girl who is expecting a baby with like Al Pacino and the girl who's like had a kid with Robert De Niro, like they're in their eighties and shit. It's almost like a financial investment. Cause it's like, even if he's 70, right. And she's 26. So it's like, she has a kid with him. It's almost like starting a savings account or buying a savings bond. Because in 10 years, he's probably going to be dead. I mean, yeah. Yeah, hope, hopefully not. Hopefully not. He hasn't done anything that would I wish ill upon him like that. I don't want anybody to die. Yeah. But he's a lot of coke. But if, you know, that's... if he's like 80 or 90, what is she going to be? 36 by then? And she's set for life. Yeah. I mean, if she's not careful, she'll be changing the baby's diaper and his diaper at the same time. Yeah. yeah exactly. You know what? <laughs> they can save money by, you know, BOGO. And it, the sad thing is for this gal, the bad part is for all these girls that are sleeping with all these old superstars and uh, football team owners, it's like, you know, Viagra used to be the only answer to help with an erection. It's like Mark Davis has a couple donuts at the game. <laughs> like she's going to have to put in overtime, right? She's going to have to have sex again. He's donuts and, donuts yeah. and bar ass and wieners, man. And bar ass, I think that you're, I think that you were having erection difficulties because of the bar ass hot dog. <laughs> There's so much goddamn salt in it. Um, all right, let's get into wrestling. Can we get into wrestling? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. 
I have stories written down, but can you, let's start with the clip. Do you want to go to the clip of us being uh, mentioned on Eric Bischoff's 83 weeks? Yeah, let me podcast? set this. Yeah, let me set the stage real fast. Okay. So I was getting on to check the YouTube channel one morning, and in my uh, feed, uh, 83 Weeks had a community post where they were saying they were going to have a Q&A, and if you wanted to submit a question for it. And I was like, fuck, I'll submit a question. There's something I've always wondered. From I wanted to hear it from Eric. And I was like, he probably won't answer it, but it'd be cool if he did. I always thought it was kind of like a Bobby Heenan, Hulk Hogan turning heel moment when Bobby Heenan was like... uh but whose side is he on, you know? I uh, always thought that Vince kind of fucked up Eric Bischoff being premiered as the GM on Raw because right before he came out and said, the new GM is Eric Bischoff, he showed Eric Bischoff backstage. Like, they, they said there was going to be a new GM that night announced, and as soon as I saw Eric Bischoff walk past Booker T, mm -hmm. and Booker T's like, you know, I was like, okay, well, there's no way that Vince was going to bring Eric Bischoff <clears throat> on TV and not make him the GM. So Eric Bischoff's obviously going to be the GM. Yeah. So I wrote Eric a question. I said, do you think that that ruined it? Do you think that if you had done it or something like that, you would have just been like, boom, surprise. You know, Eric Bischoff comes out. Do you think that Vince kind of botched it uh, by teasing you first, teasing you to the to the audience? And uh, this is uh, what happened. Uh, the Slash Tracks Network says, Eric, what was your initial reaction to WWE's locker room compared to WCW's? Do you think showing you backstage on camera before the reveal you were the new GM was a mistake that took some of the shock and awe from the reveal itself? Yeah, that's a, that's a, you know, that's a point. It's an argument. It's a good one. It's probably the one that I gravitate towards. But the other side of it is, and I'm not sure there's any absolutely correct answer. I think both answers are good answers. But one school of thought is just surprise. Shock the shit out of people. Yeah. I kind of like that one. But the other one is, by walking me out, and, and revealing me and, and walking me through the crowd and getting the, the, the reaction from the talent in the locker room, because that was pretty good. Some, yeah. some great reactions. To see those reactions right before a three-minute, two-and-a-half or three-minute commercial break creates a little bit of buzz yeah. and gets people who may not be tuning in to tune in. Now, it's incremental. It's not going to be major. But it's incremental. It matters. Numbers numbers matter. So I see both arguments, but I probably would have thrown caution to the wind and said, fuck it. I'm just going to do it the way I want to do it because that's what my gut tells me to do. And I would have probably just shocked as opposed to teased. That right there is pretty cool. Uh, don't worry about that. But yeah, Eric Bischoff, easy E, man. Yeah, I think that's amazing that the, the Slash Tracks Network was mentioned on 83 Weeks Podcast. I listen to his show. I love Eric Bischoff. Man. Yeah, we me talk too. About Bischoff. Yeah, I like Bischoff. And also, uh, Slashaholics, if Josh is ordering something, it's either Beanie, Beanie Babies, a Bar S Hot Dogs, or Donuts. It's one of the three. Or all what three. Think, what was Josh ordering behind my back, like a sleazy sleep <laughs> bag? Leave it down in the comments below right there. So. So what do you think, Alex? Uh, do you think that uh, they, they should have just – because Eric even said, you know, he's like, I can understand, you know, building the buzz up before the commercial break. But he's like, if I had it my way, it would have been like, boom, shock and awe. What, do you think they, it would have been better? I think that they shouldn't have teased him like that because what's the point of having a tease on a tease, right? So you ruin the surprise pop uh, by Bischoff coming out because you teased already that there's going to be – a new GM, right? Yeah, yeah. They had Shane McMahon there, and then Eric Bischoff walking backstage. But I mean, why would they bring Eric Bischoff in just for a little? You know what I mean? It, no, that doesn't make any sense. And the dirt sheet writers and all the people like Dave Meltzer and all those people, I'm sure to the non-casual fan, they probably already knew what was going on. But to like somebody that wasn't following, you know, the Observer and all that stuff, that would be a huge, huge deal. And they ruined it. They fumbled the bag, just yeah. like. 
just like uh, Bobby Heenan fumbled the bag at Bash at the Beach when Hogan, you know, when Hogan came out and joined the NWO. That was a major mess up, too. And that was also involving Bischoff. If there was, a, I would like to ask Eric's opinion on that, too. You know what he thought? Uh, but, and I, honestly, Easy E, if you ever see this, I also asked you what you, your thoughts on uh, what the difference between the WCW locker room and the WWE locker room, but you, you skipped that part of my question. But no, um, out of all the times for Bobby Heenan, my camera, sorry, technical difficulties here in the studio. Um, out of all the times. From all the donuts, you can't stand still right now. Out of all the times that Bobby Heenan talks shit about Hulk Hogan, that one night he could have just left it alone. <laughs> I, I know, isn't that fun? yeah? Because he always never he always kind of uh, gave the the side of the or the, his angle was that Hulk Hogan was actually a dirtbag. Yeah, right? yeah, the heel announcer. And on the one night he could have just kind of turned it down to a two or three, he fucking <laughs> amped it up to a ten. Because yeah. how many people probably saw Hogan coming and they're like, yeah, and then they hear Bobby Heenan saying, but whose side is he on? And, you know, I'd be like, if I was an adult watching that at the time, not a kid, I would have been like, oh, okay, so he's going to turn bad, okay. So, uh, yeah, Josh, I wanted to talk really quick about Hogan's appearance when he showed back up after that that hiatus of his. Yeah. He was, like, noticeably way thinner, and his mustache was, like, barely grown in. Do you, do you remember that? Yeah, uh, are you talking about right when he turned heel or after yes. stare? Okay, because at first uh, in WWF, <clears throat> he his last run in WWF was he was skinnier because the stero- he couldn't take steroids anymore. Yeah, um, he had definitely uh, leaned out a lot. And then in WCW, during like 95 into 96, he was feuding with the Dungeon of Doom or whatever. <laughs> and they actually shaved his mustache off. But the reason they shaved it off wasn't just for the storyline. He was shaving it for the movie you're talking about. I think it was Three Ninjas at High Noon at something mountain. It was either that or Santa with Muscles. It was one yeah. of the two. Yes, the, but he would he had no mustache for that. And, yeah, so he, when he came back and turned Hill, he, he was a lot slimmer there, too. So. Yeah, so it was like, even as a kid, I, I think I was like 12, um, I was just like, wow, they did, I mean, it's Hulk Hogan. I know it's Hulk Hogan, but this is not Hulk Hogan. Like, which I think... This doesn't, it didn't lessen the impact of him joining the NWO by any stretch of the imagination. Mm. But if it was like superhero buffed out Hulk Hogan, it would have made it even more impactful, I think. He just, he did not look like he was training as much. It it just, (laughs) he looked like he was trying to join a basketball team or something. He like leaned out so much. That's what happens when you stop saying your prayers, eating your vitamins, and training. So, yeah, taking your, you know, your your real vitamins, vitamins, uh, yeah. vitamin S. <laughs> uh, Josh, the let's get into the second wrestling story of the episode. Okay, all right. So, Josh, there's two stories wrapped into one here. So, 31 years ago, and I believe this was a couple weeks ago. This it was a 31 year anniversary of the first ever King of the Ring pay per view. So. I remember the King of the Ring being a really big deal, how they presented it. It Previously to being a pay-per-view, Slashaholics, the King of the Ring was a house show. So if someone had won the King of the Ring, like I think uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan won King of the Ring. And then Randy Randy Savage beat Hacksaw. Randy Savage beat Hacksaw. That's how he became Macho King. And Bret Hart had actually won King of the Ring before the pay-per-view on a house show run. But the first pay-per-view, Bret Hart won the King of the Ring. And I just wanted to uh, get your thoughts. Bret Hart was so competitive with Hulk Hogan. And I don't even think Hulk Hogan understood that Bret felt this way or was competing with him. Because Bret had to drop the title to Yoko. Hogan shows up at WrestleMania 9 and takes the belt. So Bret Hart's been on record saying that, like, this King of the Ring was, like, my coming out party. It was my opportunity to show everybody how that I was the best. So Bret puts on... Three classic matches. He wrestles uh, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. He wrestles Mr. Perfect and puts on an amazing match. Yes. And then he wrestles with freaking Bam Bam Bigelow in the finals, a 400-pound big man. And I think he did a victory roll on Bam Bam to win the damn thing. But he puts on three classic Matt classics. I can't even say classic enough. <laughs> They're all different matches in the same night. In the same night, Hogan is wrestling Yoko and loses. 
by a fucking fireball camera. So he's going <laughs> with the Gaga bullshit gimmick. So Hogan's doing some bullshit while Brett's putting on three absolute legendary matches. What's your thoughts on that, on, on him and Hogan uh, that night? I wish that I could say that by that point, Hogan was being booed in WWF. People were tired of him. But honestly, I remember watching it, and you can watch it to this day. People, he was st- Hogan was still getting the pop. You know, Bret Hart was doing really good work, mm-hmm. but it was kind of like um, Tito Santana or, um, oh, my gosh, I'm losing my train of Rick thought. Rick Martel or Kurt Henning or any of those guys. Yeah, yeah, it's like Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Bret Hart, you know, they, like them putting on it. it. It was amazing wrestling, but the pop was still going for Hogan. Yeah. But, so I don't I don't I don't know if Bret Hart stole the show that night. He probably did with like older fans, but like your general fans of that time period were were really worried about Hulk Hogan when he got hurt, even though it was such a stupid gimmick looking back on it, you know, the fireball camera thing. Harvey uh, so. Whippleman was the guy playing the cameraman, the the Asian cameraman for yeah. Yoko. As soon as he jumped up on the side of the ring on the apron, I was like when on the planet has there ever been a cameraman that's allowed to take photos on the actual mat during a pay-per-view? Right. I knew some fuckery was about to happen. I've seen video cameras up there, but never like, you know, still photography. And why does Hogan, what is Hogan's obsession with if I have if I lose, I have to have a fireball shot in my face. He did the same thing with Warrior at Halloween Havoc. He tried like, to blind that man. He tried to blind that man. And Warrior's like the, starting to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> what is his obsession with this? Why does Hogan always have to, I, if I'm going to lose, brother, it's got to be like, even if he's a heel, he's got to lose. He can't lose cleanly, apparently. I know, man. It's, it, I'm surprised he lost so clean to like Goldberg and stuff. I was, dude, I was just <laughs> going to say the only match he ever lost cleanly was to Goldberg uh, on uh, Nitro. Roddy Piper. Even Um, though, like, he changed the whole thing where everybody thought it was for the belt, but then it wasn't for the belt. Yeah, but, Uh, like, I don't – he barely lost clean. And even when when he was a heel, it was barely clean. Um, I don't know, man. I I love Hulk Hogan. I was a Hulkamaniac. Just the older I get, the older I become, the more I can see through his bullshit. He lies about everything. Yeah, and and now with the uh, whole beer and being safe, it's just – you know, the and funny thing about the King of the Ring 93 is a promo was done for that show with Hogan and Jimmy Hart because all of a sudden Jimmy Hart was Hogan's manager. Yeah, you know, it's like because, which, which because made Hogan, no sense. Yeah, because Hogan Hogan needs a manager. He's like one of the biggest mouthpieces. Hogan was like the biggest mouthpiece. Manager was for people that can't talk. <laughs> that was Hulk getting him a job. Yeah, That's it's like their buddies in real life. That was what that was. It's like every time Hogan had a manager or a tag partner, he would always end up winning the matches himself. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> and during the promo, uh, I can't. I, I'll have to find it. I don't think I can get a clip of it, but just look it up. You'll find it. Uh, Jimmy Hart is like, "Hey, baby," you know, and he's all like, uh, "He's got the red, right, and right, red, white, and blue running through his veins, brother." And he was born and raised in the USA, and all this. And uh, those ended up being the lyrics to his WCW song. Like the promo Jimmy Hart does for the King of the Ring thing for Hogan ended up being the lyrics to Hogan's WCW music. So it's like, I'm like, Jimmy Hart was totally writing that song, uh, you know, before they did the prior. Yeah. Yeah. Because Hogan, uh, a lot of people don't don't know this, but they think as soon as Hogan lost on, you know, pay-per-view to Yoko at King of the Ring, he was gone. Hogan was doing, he had a bunch of, he was still contracted to do a bunch of European house shows after that. So yeah. him and Yoko feuded for the title in Europe. So yeah. a lot we don't, a lot of people don't know that because, you know, we live in America. So a, guaranteed Jimmy Hart was writing lyrics to another theme song because they knew they didn't have rights to Real American. So they're, they were prepping for his departure just in case. So maybe when Hogan says like, oh yeah, brother, I was just, I was doing, you know, uh, the what the hell thunder in paradise the the boat show you know I wasn't going to come back till Ric Flair and and Bischoff you know begged me basically to come save WCW he was probably planning something in advance right because that's too much of a coincidence with the lyrics that's just a little too coincidental the only thing <clears throat> excuse me the only thing I can think of if it wasn't planning a return they were making that uh, Hulk Hogan in the 
boot band wrestling boot band album and, and that was one of the songs on there so maybe. i don't know i don't know but um maybe maybe jimmy hart did that promo that night on the cuff you know because back then they didn't have scripts and he was just like saying stuff and it came out and he, and he was sitting there thinking i can make that a song you know so he, he dude he was jimmy hart was with the band called the gentries they had a a top 10 hit like jimmy hart was a legitimate musician yeah uh, and i think the song was called keep on dancing all night long or it was something like that it was number uh, one it, it like yeah. it, it went above a beatles song uh, yeah jimmy personally. hart was a legit musician probably still is a legit musician um josh since we're talking about hogan can we go to the slash tracks psa for the day yes yes, yes. yeah so we have a psa today uh slash hogs and hulk hogan the legendary hulk hogan is going to tell you why you shouldn't smoke For all my Hulkamaniacs that have stuck with me through the thick and thin, trained, said their prayers, and eat their vitamins, be a survivor, man. Don't smoke, it's a joke. Nice, nice PSA. Should I should have listened to it. But people, he, he's, he's selling beer, and everybody yeah. knows when you drink, you smoke. So he's kind of canceling out his whole PSA there. <laughs> he's selling he's beer now. It's the mega powers of uh, addictions. Smoking <laughs> and, and drinking go hand in hand, brother. Yes, yes, they do, brother. Uh, conflicting advice from the Hulkster, his real American. And also, before we get into your cringe, uh, we, slash Hulks, cringe corner debuting right now on the show. Josh has got Josh's cringe corner. But I want to say real quick, it's real interesting that the Hulkster's selling beer now because he was just on the Bible channel, TBN, talking about how he's sober <laughs> Nothing good has ever happened from him drinking and how he's all about Jesus. And like literally two weeks later, he's got his own beer brand. I just don't get it. I don't Dude, understand it. His son had another DUI recently. There's a video out where Hogan shows up and is very cordial and calm with the cops. And he even tells the cops everything bad that's ever happened. Anybody I know had to do with alcohol. And here he is selling yeah. beer. <laughs> I, officer, I hate alcohol. Uh, can't stand it. But make sure you buy a couple cases of real American beer on your way home, brother. Born and born and it's 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 made and everything here in the USA. Uh, you'll uh, have, you'll have the red, white, and blue. You'll have the red, white, and booze running through your veins. Um, <laughs> you'll have a point one eight running through your veins. <laughs> Hey, Josh. The hops were raised in the <laughs> USA. <laughs> Josh, can you hit the Slashaholics with your new cringe corner? Tell yep, us what this it's is, about. This, week, this week's cringe corner is going to be a wrestling one. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I teased the idea of this segment whenever we played the uh, in the last episode uh, with that preacher guy. Uh, this one is going to be a wrestling-themed one. Uh, it's... Uh, Mean Mark Callis, The Undertaker. I think he's like 18 or 19 years old in this thing. And even he, watch him at the end of the promo as he's walking away. He even throws his hand on his head because uh, he knows how bad he did. Uh, I, this, this was pretty cringe. I bet his butt cheeks were clenched through the whole thing. <laughs> oh, get him a donut. <laughs> Let's see it. Calls himself... Master of pain. Yeah, that's right. Master of pain. Because where I've been the last five years, you have to know how to handle pain. And I know it better than anybody. I've been in the Atlanta State Penitentiary. And I'm not ashamed to know it. I went up there on a bad rap because two chum punks jumped me in a parking lot. And now they're pushing up daisies. And let me tell you, Jerry Lawler, Jerry Lawler, whatever you call yourself, it doesn't matter to me, like I said, names aren't important where I'm from. But I tell you what, Ricky Morton sent me here, and I'm going to do a job for him. And brother, if you get out alive, you'll be thankful. Hmm. Master of pain. Don't know his name. Not sure I want to. And after he whoops your butt, you'll be thankful. So, uh, and you know, I had no idea that, that Mark Calloway killed two people in a parking lot because they they looked at him wrong or whatever it was he said <laughs> you just got out of prison for a bad well, route how, how great that they were killed by the undertaker because he just happened to have a couple coffins in the back of his fucking hearse 
Oh, yes! My Undertaker! You're so lucky! Oh, yes! You we won't have to pay for any funeral costs after Mark Callis, mean Mark, is done. Oh, yes. Cringy. And back then, Paul Bearer was just, uh, what was it, Percy? Percy, Percy Pringle. Yeah, Percy Pringle. <laughs> hey, uh, let for that was cringy AF. Um, you know what's not cringy? This last wrestling story. This is actually this this wrestling story. I don't want to build it up too much. This might be my favorite wrestling story we've ever done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Recently, and I don't know if it's a recent thing or if it just surfaced or if it was around before and I just saw it for the first time. Um, in April of 1999, Josh. So this is like WCW era uh macho man randy savage actually showed up to his best friend's daughter's elementary school show and tell oh like she brought macho man randy savage to show and tell i think that's the greatest like how do you follow that okay i have two questions how do you follow that if you're going after like macho man is main eventing that show and tell for sure right he's yeah. gotta be can't follow that yeah. and number two did the teacher play pomp and serpent circumstance as Macho Man makes his entrance to the front of the class behind the chalkboard for show and tell? There was, a, like, there, there was a graduation, a kindergarten graduation going on down the hall, and he just thought it was time to come in. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, that's my music. Yeah, I better go see what I'm thinking. I better go check it out. Yeah. Little little Jeff uh, shows up, you know. He he has to go after Macho Man, and it's all like, I I uh, I collect clowns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do, do you? Well, let me tell you who is a real clown: Hulk Hogan. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, the the teacher's yeah. like, okay, Randy, like you know, we really appreciate you showing up, but you, that was three days ago. <laughs> so you've been home. shitting on Hulk. You've just been shitting on Hulk Hogan. For the last 47 minutes, you know, you know, we got another kid who wants to show us his clown collection here. <laughs> so I I don't know. I just think that's great that Macho Man like was, would do that yes, for that little girl. I think that's great. That's amazing. Um, let hey, before we get into Slash Tracks Horror, I forgot to I, we have a I have a new segment. Josh had Slash Tracks Cringe. <laughs> well, I got Slash Tracks Fitness, okay? All right. We got to hit the Slashaholics with this brand new craze. I don't know if you guys are breaking news. There's this new thing called Jazzercise, okay? Maybe I'm a little late to the party here, Josh. New? Oh, wow. It's new to, new to me, okay? And this gal wants to teach us how to Jazzercise and stay healthy and promote good blood flow. You won't just need donuts anymore. Jazzercise is going to help you. Josh, hit the Slashaholics with this clip. And maybe your life will be changed after this. We're gonna do some jazzercise that'll keep you fit and smiling, sugar. What's in your life? Swing that arm. There you go. Smile for heaven's sake. Yeah. You ready? Now find that beat. There it is. Oh yeah. That's good. Ho. Now stack, release, contract, release, contract, release. There you go. Smiling, smiling. Smiling down to the pelvis. Front, back, front, back. Push it, pull it, push it, pull it. Yeah! There you go. Now your favorite thing. The hip sugar. Come on and shake that cute little booty of yours. Ow! Ha! Yeah. Hup, 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 hup. Here we go. Feel that beat. We're gonna play a little b-ball now. You, me, and all of us jazzercisers together. Here we go. You gotta strut your stuff. That's good. You take it out, dad, in, aha. Uh -huh. All right, I do it again. That's nice. Come on, a little dribbling right here. Way down, you take it up and back. Aha, uh -huh. take it down. All right, all right. Whoa, yeah. Again. You gotta do it with us, yeah. It's fun. You're good. Feels good. Okay, now's the time. You gotta get up and boogie with this, honey. Yeah. You gotta find that boogie body. Okay, that's good. Looks good. Feel the beat. 
um chicka, um chicka, um chicka, um chicka, um chicka, um now take it to the right. The oh left. Your favorite segment, buddy. Slash tracks, horror, and spooky news, buddy. Let's do it. All right. Terrifier 3, Josh. Uh, the 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 huge follow-up to Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2. Terrifier 2 is about Art the Clown, obviously, slash Alex. If you watch the channel, we've talked about it before. Um, Josh and I kind of think of it as like, almost like torture porn a little bit. We're not huge fans of it, but we respect it. How about yeah. that? Um, definitely, definitely would have fit in with the 80s horror, though. I think, you know, yeah. toned down just a little bit. He could have been an 80s slasher for sure. But, yeah, 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 the Art the Clown is is very popular, and I can see the appeal and i'm really this headline it's not even really a headline it's like so filming just wrapped on terrifier 3 so terrifier 3 is coming but that's not even the story uh an image of jason patrick who was in lost boys he played michael he's like the star of lost boys like Kiefer sutherland jason patrick jason patrick's the older brother of Corey haim he's tur he turns into half a vampire right jason patrick is making his return to horror movies in terrifier three wow so he's returning and i heard shelly long's returning to horror she's doing what? a horror movie yeah there was a whole video of her like uh like behind the scenes leaving her house getting in her car she's gonna be in some really? horror, some horror movie maybe we'll talk about it next episode i'll try to dig it up but yeah this is that's, amazing yeah that's it's really amazing. cool yeah she she needed it and i think it's gonna be cool for her to be back but i just, but, Jesus, just everything dude Everything I've seen about Jason Patrick, though, Josh, he's really selective with the roles he takes. Well, Terrifier so, 3, obviously. I That's what I was, that's the first thing I thought. I was like, he, does he need to keep his SAG card or something? What's going on? <laughs> like, There's a lot of donuts on set. So. I, yeah, I don't, I, I'm so, I'm so lost. Um, maybe, this, but. maybe the sax of, shirtless saxophone guy hooked him up with the gig. You never Maybe know. He's on, yeah, I don't know. Um, and he obviously still believes. He still believes. <laughs> yeah, he's in one. He's in a new horror movie. Um, Ghostbusters Two, Josh. So the mega hit Ghostbusters Two uh, was released in theaters on June sixteenth, over thirty five years ago. That's awesome. Major uh, anniversary, thirty five years. Yes, man. Ghostbusters 2. I rented that so much. I think I was like five when it came out, six. And I remember getting Ghostbusters cereal and uh, it, came with a, it came with a record. And I begged my mom and dad until they took me. So like, we saw a yard sale that had a record player. They bought me the record players really cheap. And I finally listened to it. And all it was was the Egon from the cartoon telling, yeah. you, telling you about a contest you can enter. To like go out and watch the movie and meet the cartoon voice actor cast. Welcome to the new Ghostbusters movie mystery. In just a moment, you'll get a chance to meet Egon Spengler, the brave, courageous hero from the Ghostbusters movies. Now, kids, answer the three questions that Egon will ask you later on this record, and you could be eligible to win one of the two grand prizes in the new Ghostbusters movie mystery sweepstakes. And right now, I take great pride in introducing Egon Spengler. Hello, Ghostbusters fans. Have you been looking out for ghosts lately? Great. Now you have a chance to be an honorary member of the Ghostbusters team. You can win a trip to Hollywood for you and your family and meet me, Dr. Egon Spengler. How lucky can you get? <laughs> well, it could be worse. You could be meeting Slimer. Now here's a tip. Clues to the mystery questions are contained in the new Ghostbusters movie. If you haven't seen it yet, make plans to go right away. It's great. You've never seen ghosts like the ones in this movie. Everyone thinks the Ghostbusters are beaten, but you know better, don't you? We're back, and we're better than ever, especially me, the brilliant Dr. Egon Spengler, with twice the know-how and twice the particle power. <laughs> now remember, everyone, if there's something wrong in your neighborhood, who are you going to call? Now, Egon will ask you some fun questions about the new Ghostbusters movie. Question number one. Name the woman who works at the art museum who's Peter Bankman's girlfriend. Number two, on what holiday does the big bust happen at the end of the movie? And question number three, what U.S. monument do the Ghostbusters work from to save the city? Okay, is everybody ready to enter the sweepstakes? 
Mail a 3 by 5 card with your answers, your name, age, and address, including zip code, and your telephone number to the new Ghostbusters Movie Mystery Sweepstakes, P.O. Box 4029, Beverly Hills, California, 90213-4029. The more you enter, the more chances you have to win. Only one entry per envelope, please. See details and official rules on specially marked boxes of new Ghostbusters, Cookie Crisp, and Dinosaurs brand cereals. There are two versions of the record, so collect them both. See you at the movies, kids. Oh. Wait a minute. Dude, so you had a Ralphie from Christmas Story Moment. It's yes. like Egon comes on the record and he's like, remember to drink your Ovaltine. Pretty much. Pretty much. A hey. cruddy commercial. But hey, Ghostbusters 2 also brought one of the coolest things from my childhood memories and everything. Vigo. 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 Uh, they're talking about bringing Vigo back for the next Ghostbusters sequel because Frozen Empire actually did really good and made over $200 million. But now the, uh, yeah, take that, critics. Go yeah. Fuck yourself. Hardee's had a Slimer Sunday for Ghostbusters 2. It was an ice cream Sunday with green hot fudge. Ooh, baby. It was great. Like, I have so many memories. Uh, and what's crazy is I have so many memories of eating that, but it was only out for like six months, five months or something. But yeah. Uh, I, I'm a, I listen, that sounds delicious, but like anything uh, with that much food dye, dye, like coloring in desserts, I like it and stuff. I was at a wedding where they had like a black uh, iced cake because the wedding was death themed, by the way. It was till death do you part. So death yeah. was the theme, right? The okay. cake looked like it was it was black and it was all it was really a pretty cake. But I ate it and like I literally a slash of uh, TMI coming. My bowel <laughs> movements were pure black for like days after this. We're gonna lose our sponsorship again. The beanie baby guys like yeah, that's it. You're talking about donut boners. <laughs> uh, and freaking black bowel movements. I've had enough. I'm out of here. I'm taking my fucking five hundred dollar beanie babies and I'm leaving. Um, yeah. So no. So let's get into let's get into the next horror story real quick. Okay. All right, man. This is real quick. I'm just. I'm, we're gonna. This is. We're gonna hit this one real quick. So Terrifier three, uh, star David Hor uh, Howard Thornton, who plays Art the Clown. He just signed on to star in the upcoming horror movie. Steamboat Willie. So oh, the Mickey Mouse thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's called Screamboat. So excuse me. The, the title of the movie is actually called Screamboat. And he's going to be playing uh the murderous mouse in the upcoming horror movie. That's awesome. I think oh. one of these one of these Mickey Mouse things, they ought to like just make it an animated killer, you know, like, um, like, uh, like Roger, Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. Yeah. And just have the the slasher be an animated Mickey Mouse, the version they can use, just straight up with a with a cartoon sure. knife and everything. Oh, I'm gonna have to fucking kill you now. Oh, that, oh. I'm I'm not even kidding. That would be creepy and and fun. And since you're talking about that, before we move on to headlines, Puniverse, it's a real thing. It's called the Puniverse. I know it sounds horrible, mm -hmm. but it is Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, the, the hunt. They've got all these other movies playing, like, uh, uh, oh my God, Peter Pan. Uh, they're gonna have like Woozles and all that from uh, Winnie the Pooh in the next Winnie the Pooh movie. Heffalumps and Woozles. Yeah, they're gonna have Heffalumps and Woozles. Uh, Pinocchio's got an evil one coming out. Bambi, and then they're after these movies come out, they're gonna have like an Avengers thing with all of them in one movie. And it's coming straight to Redbox next yes. summer. <laughs> no way that's getting a theatrical release uh last horror story of the episode i got one mm -hmm. more uh welcome to dairy so the tv show that's coming on hbo max it's the it pre-equal oh i know what uh, you're gonna say here go ahead bill skarsgård just yep. signed on to reprise his role as pennywise hell yeah that's great yeah i'm pumped for that you know what that gives it instant credibility now yes. i'm definitely gonna. i was gonna watch before but i'm definitely watching now they ought to get Tim Curry to play like a disabled person in town in an episode. No, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying like he did it for uh, the Rocky Horror remake. You know, he played okay. he played the narrator and he played a narrator in a wheelchair. Uh, okay, like, I, I just I wasn't I wasn't getting mad or I just like I just the image in my because 
if you got slash Alex, Tim Curry's not doing great. Right he's now. not, he's not. But uh, uh, I think that would be an amazing way to, you know, work. maybe if like one of the townsfolk is in a wheelchair or something, you know, something where they could put him in a cameo, he would oh, do it. He would definitely probably do it. Hey, I got an idea right now. The Dairy Inn, where they all stay at later on, right? They're all in that hotel. He yeah. could be the proprietor of the Dairy Inn. They could hide him right behind the desk. You'd never even know he was in a wheelchair. Yeah, that would be freaking awesome. Just any yeah. anything to get him in there, for sure. Okay. By the way, Tim Curry, uh, HBO Max, if you guys are watching this, make that happen. Tim Curry should be running the Dairy Inn. Uh, I don't know. And we, listen, if it's a hit, you know, which it will be, send us some money to the Slash Tracks 2020 at gmail.com and join the Patreon and get a cameo from us and uh, thank us for the great idea. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Josh, Our cameos are only $5 right now. $5 and you get like an amazing video cameo from us. So. Yeah, 5 bucks. Sometimes it's on sale. Sometimes it's even cheaper. They should be flying uh, off the shelves. All right, Josh, let's get into headlines, buddy. Let's do it. All right, man. This, this part of the show is actually uh, going to have a title. It's got a theme and it's called Writing Dirty, Josh. Hit it. Kiss me riding dirty. Trying to kiss me riding dirty. Trying to kiss me riding dirty. Trying to kiss me riding dirty. I'm glad I got that and not white and nerdy. So, so Josh, ja, all the all these uh, stories in tonight's episode are driving related. So, first story of headlines: Amazon delivery driver Josh reportedly leaves package at a smoking garage and doesn't call nine one one. So the hey, house, house on fire. You got to get your job done, man. You got packages to deliver. You ever had, you ever got complaints and you ever, yeah, you know, your package don't show up on time or whatever. Don't be a hero. He's Z like, Nation or Z Nation. Oh my God. Zombie land taught us don't be a hero. So he's got his phone out. He's like delivered. Uh, here's your little photo. You're snapping to make sure it's delivered. <laughs> Fucking house is on fire in the background of the he, photo. He probably never me. even looked up. <laughs> Uh, dude, so the incident was captured on a security camera showing the driver placing the package, snapping a confirmation photo, and departing despite massive amounts of visible smoke. <laughs> I'm uh, telling you, he might not have saw it. Oh, <laughs> I've, on, delivered, I've delivered stuff, man, where I'm not even paying attention. I've got headphones in, listening to, you know, one of our old podcasts or 83 weeks or something, and I'm just, I'm in the zone. Did Amazon... So Amazon's in, Amazon is investigating the matter. But my question, Josh, did the driver get tipped by the homeowners <laughs> for the delivery? <laughs> it was a fire sale. Um, I oh, think man. I think if Amazon punishes him, it's bullshit. He didn't start the fire. He did his job. There's nothing in his training that says put out a fire. Okay. So he didn't start the fire. So Billy Joel and him have something in common, huh? Eh? Uh -huh. Dad joke of the night. Uh, second, second driving related headline of the episode, Josh. Suspended driver, Josh, shocks the judge by joining a Zoom call. So he's having a, he's having a hearing. Okay. I saw it. Yes. <laughs> while driving. It's great. So it's great. His, he has no license, Slashaholics. He's joining this Zoom call with the judge about driving infractions while driving he's That's, like i'm so sorry i'm, I'm parking now <laughs> I'm, and the judge is like are you like are you serious are you driving right now so was, the judge is like you know that clip where it's like no discussion directly to jail go to jail directly to jail mr Hello? harris are you driving um, actually i'm pulling into my doctor's office actually so so i uh, just give me one second i'm parking right now You stationary? I'm pulling yeah. in right now at the second. Yes, I am. All right. What are we doing? Uh, Your Honor, we are respectfully requesting an adjournment in this matter, um, up possibly two to four weeks if the court would allow. Okay. So maybe I don't understand something. This is a driving while license suspended? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving. I don't even know why he would do that. 
So defendant's bond is revoked in this matter. Defendant is to turn himself into the Washington County Jail by 6 p.m. today. Failure to turn himself in will result in a bench warrant with no bond. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Harris, I'll be giving you a call. Okay. Court calls the case, people versus Maya Isom. The judge basically told this guy, Slashaholics, like, I don't care what you're doing, drive yourself immediately to the county jail and turn yourself in. Here's a like, here's a so reenactment, reenactment for you. Okay, I'll be the guy, you'll be the judge here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, judge, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm 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 pulling into a parking spot right now. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. You're actually going to pull out of that parking spot and go directly to jail. Go to jail. Why? Because you're driving, Josh. You're driving. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm. No, I'm not. It... Nope, this isn't. It's a donut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that your dick is driving the car. <laughs> you're like, I'm not driving. I'm technically not driving this. My dick is because I have a boner because I ate donuts. Uh, no, go to jail. That guy's an idiot. I, and just how non slash aholics look this video up on YouTube. He so nonchalantly answers the phone, talks to the judge like it's no big deal. Like I yes. he dumb. He looked like Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern show when yes. he gets caught getting food late at night, and he's like, and the judge is like, "What are you? Hey, what are you doing?" And then he looks at the judge like, "Nothing, just hanging around, like <laughs> like nothing." Idiot slash tracks idiot of the day. That guy, Josh last. Headline for Riding Dirty and last story of the show. Okay. Um, and I'd love to say this show went by fast because it didn't, but when we finally got to start recording, Josh, it did. So I had a lot of fun. This was the that joke that we talked about, the Nathan's Bar S hot dog <laughs> ladder match. That was great. That was, you made me laugh so hard. That was funny. That's that was, thumbnail material. Yeah, that is hilarious. Um, okay. Student uses Barbie Jeep to get around college campus after recent DWI. So, uh, Texas State University student Terry, Tara Monroe purchased a Barbie Jeep to get around campus after her DWI. This isn't recent. This is 2015. I just saw this story for the first time. But there's... Josh, can you please show the clip to the Slashaholics of her driving this Barbie Jeep around campus, please? Yes. Yes. A 20-year-old Texas State junior is driving a Barbie car to get to class, just like she used to do with a real car. Can I get a picture with you? That'd be dope. All right, That'd send me that. Right. For the time being, it's Tara's mode of transportation. Why? Because of this. A police mugshot taken following her arrest for drunk driving. Her dad, Monty, gave her a bike, but Tara didn't want to use it. I had a perfectly good bike. Uh, she lived close enough to campus, so I thought that was the right action to take. I'm kind of a diva, I'll admit it. I don't like the sweat. I don't like to work out. Then she remembered her Barbie car when she was a little kid. She loved that car, so she bought one online. I got out and I told her I wanted to test drive it. And she was like, where's the little girl? And I was like, uh, I am the little girl. No speeding in this vehicle. Five miles an hour is all it'll do. There's three gears. There's a um, reverse. There's turtle. And then there's like rabbit because it goes from like going so slow to going so fast. Tara has been criticized by some who think she's making light of a serious drunk driving offense. But this engineering major who is on the dean's list says that's I mean, just not true. I'm not at all trying to make a joke out of that. And really me getting the Jeep had nothing to do with that. I just didn't want to walk the clock. And guess what? Tara's not alone. Others are jumping on the Barbie bandwagon. My roommate actually just bought one too. It's more of just like a fun thing to do with your friend. I don't have a break. No, not, you don't get a break. Your foot is your break. And Tara, I just want to put this for the record before we end the show here and everything. Just because we told you to be a kid as long as you can, because I, I know you're the same person that wrote that letter. It doesn't give you the right to drive drunk in a in a in a power wheel. Okay, so do it sober. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. You it, technically, she's not driving. Uh, that's a good point. But yeah, I, stay a kid as long as you can. See, Tara Tara understands that. Uh, dude, so before we end the show, I'm going to piggyback off this real quick. One time, my friend had a pow a Bigfoot power wheel, 
And it was, uh, we were, we were like 12 and we're not, one person shouldn't even be in this. We go to the biggest hill in town. He gets in the back. I I'm driving. I'm in the front. Dude, we rode this Bigfoot power wheel down this hill together and ate absolute shit at the bottom and had a blast. I had bet. a great time. Yeah. Like so, tonight was a great time. Oh, this, this turned out, it, listen, slash Alex, this episode was really hard to, to put out because we had a lot of recording issues. A lot of it was on my end. My internet connection was terrible, but it ended up being one of the funnest episodes we've recorded ever. I had a blast. So yes, thanks I've... for tuning in guys. And yeah. uh, you know, if you want to be a part of the show, uh, you can send in a, would you rather a verse, you know, who would win or an ask slashy uh, just slash tracks, 2020 at gmail.com. Uh, send us whatever, send us a letter just an email saying hi, or if you got a question, anything or something you want to see on the show, yeah. um, you know, get a cameo from us. They're only five bucks. Cameo.com forward slash slash tracks network. Uh, if you want to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash 80 slash your librarian. Uh, and you can also donate through PayPal or cash app. All the information is either on the screen or in the description and pin comment below. Um, yeah. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Be excellent to each other. And remember, the sun never sets on those who ride into it. Um, say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dogs. And don't forget, subscribe to the secondary channel, Slash Tracks Network with Alex Vanover. Josh and I already have two Slash Tracks Reviews TV show episodes on there right now. And we'll, we might have something new on there before the weekend's end to add to it. Thank definitely. you so much. Yes, definitely. Get over there. That's going to be in the description and pinned comment. I got to order uh, some Beanie Babies and uh, I'm going to oh, make know. me some uh, bar ass hot dogs. So, yep. Good night. Josh, Josh, Josh is to go. Josh's shopping list bar ass hot dogs, yeah, uh, dozen cool. donuts, and Beanie Babies. I'm going to yeah. get, uh, I want to order, I want to order three sets of the Beanie Babies. Yep. All right. Good night, everybody. Yep. Now make it four. Make it. You got me mad now.